Let me begin how I even started. For several years, I have been unhealthy, overweight, sick, all kinds of issues. And I've tried like everything. I've tried every diet, every hike, every personal trainer, every <coughs> gym. And it finally hit me just about, I think, November, December. You know what? Maybe my body's asking for something else. So I did a little bit of studying and did my own investigation. And I realized if I started to feed my body the foods that it's craving and, and needs to live, then I won't crave the salt, the chips, the chocolate. At least I won't crave it all the time. So I just started a little experiment and I started to make these. Um, every morning I have what they call a, a Nutri Shake. And I make them with kale and pineapples and nuts and seeds and um, a maca root, which is, is, a, is a, a type of root. And everything you see up here I put into my shakes. So I noticed that I just started doing that and nothing else. And I decided I wasn't going to deny myself anything either. This is the only thing I changed was started to feed my body what it needs to live. And I did more meditation and just more awareness of what I was doing. And before I knew it, after a few months, I actually had lost 25 pounds. Now I don't know if, as I've lost more because the weight is not an issue. So I will not even weigh myself for another three or four months because you people get hung up on numbers. You don't get num hung up on numbers. You get hung up on how you feel. And I feel amazing. Um, I, I'm so excited about it. I started coming here and at work and, and telling everybody and making them for people. And I don't even know how many people are doing it now, but everybody's starting to do these Nutra shakes or, or, or whatever. So I was going to make a couple for you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Again, I'm not a dietitian, but, but also for you, you have to become responsible for your own health and you have to empower yourself. So no matter what I say or Doc says or anybody says, you need to look into it, study it. See what works best for you. You've got to be responsible for yourself, not for what I say. Okay? And we're all different human beings. So, but my favorite one, which I tricked my husband into, is, is going to be a, a kale. And this is what I was doing every morning. This is kale. I also use frozen fruit, or you can use ice, but I just use frozen fruit for people that want it colder. So I'm going to put some kale and I'm going to just pick some other fruits here that I might want. I'm going to pick a couple of fresh pineapples that were cut. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of banana. Banana in there. Um, and certain blenders can chop up certain things and certain can't. This one can chop up seeds and nuts. So I'm going to put into this one um, a little bit of chia seeds and they're just seeds and they help with my they're omega-3 so they're really good for you but they also help with my appetite because a little bit of these get into your body and then they swell up a little bit slows your digestion down so that your body has time to take that food and take out what it needs so that it, it it's getting the nutrients so i'm going to put a little bit of that in what else do i want Got some blueberries and this is what I do, and every now and then I'll do one for Dr. Chaudhry, especially when I, if I come in and he's grumpy. <laughs> Are they allowed to know that? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to add a little bit more water. And then I'm just going to shake this up. And I have things for everybody to taste. And then when you eat lunch, if you come over, I can make you any kind that you want to taste. And I'm just going to blend this up. I'm going to make one more here and then pour it out. Um, the other one that I've been doing recently um summer's coming and i'm just just studying and investigating everything but i'm finding that watermelon juice is very very good for you just plain watermelon juice because you're you're anxious you're busy you're active it's hot your, your insides are so hot and this is a naturally cooling for your organs internal organs to be cooled so that they can work to their proper benefit 
And so I'm doing this little test and I'm right in the middle of it. And actually I'll be drinking this every morning for six weeks. All I'm gonna put in here is watermelon. I'm gonna put a couple frozen strawberries. And I did this today and I liked it. Did you like it when you tried it? I'm gonna put a chunk of ginger in. Ginger's good for your digestion, good for your stomach. Um, if you're a little nauseous or upset belly, ginger's good for that. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of ginger in. And then again, the water. So this is a great summer one. That's all it is. I drink one of these in the morning, and then I drink a smaller one of just, just plain watermelon. And you can put the rind in, you can, depending on your blender. You can put the rind in, a little bit of the green, a little bit of the white, because a lot of nutrients are there. Then I'm going to do one that I like, is, is mac is my favorite root. And I'm going to make one of that because it's, it's, a, it's a bitter root, and I'll make it so you won't, you'll like it. Anybody have any questions while I'm doing this, or? If all you did was drink this during the day, you would get the, the necessary nutrients, vitamins, and whatever? You can, like I'm not, like I said, not a dietitian. However, you, you need balance, so you need other foods. But this, because I put the chia seeds in, it does have protein in it, so it does have all the special vitamins, but I would never just, my personal self would never just drink this. Now the green ones, I, is a, you can blend it so it's totally liquid. I leave a little bit of the, the green stuff. What happens is when you do it this way, you're breaking down everything to its actual basic molecule and your body's able to digest it without much work. But this is a full of kale. I usually, I eat like two cups of kale a day at least, two to three cups. I'm going to try to see if I can get you to taste maca without hating it. We'll put some blueberries in this one. I'm also going to put pumpkin seeds. You can put seeds in these. I put walnuts, pumpkin seeds, I put chia seeds, flax seeds. I, um, so I'm just going to dump that in. And this is, this is the maca powder. I'll add a big banana to that one. What is maca powder? Where does that come from? It's something I personally like, and if you study it or, or, or look online and study it, but it's actually made from a root of a plant that grows in the Andy Mountains up high at the highest level, and it's like the only, there are very few plants that can grow in that kind of altitude. And the, um, what, what the Indians have used it for centuries and centuries and centuries, and they use it like we use cocoa. They, they make their brownies out of it and stuff like that, but it has wonderful, for any women that are going through mood swings, PMS, any kind of issues like that, it stabilizes your hormones. And, and, and I tested it, so I would take it for a month and then I quit taking it for a month. And then I would take it, and I personally love it. So, but, but that's what it, it's for. But definitely do your own you know, investigation on it or whatever. But it's just a root. It's not a, it, you know, it's similar to cocoa that you would know of. But cocoa is a bean, but you know what I mean? It's that kind of a powder. This will actually liquidify the seeds also that, that, that they're in here. Does anybody want to try this one? I, I won't. 
I won't fill these glasses up. Now, however, I've done maca with almond milk and maca and bananas and um, dark chocolate. And it really tasted like a chocolate shake. Am I allowed to say that, Doc? I okay. I mean, I personally use the Nutribullet because it will break down the seeds. So some blenders will, some won't. So you would have to check, but the Nutribullet actually breaks the seeds. It takes stems. Like when I put grapes in there, I put the stems in, like the rind, and it, it, it breaks down everything. That's why I use it. And I also, my son, I have an 18-year-old son, and he's been going to Sheets, and he was getting himself a strawberry banana smoothie. And I looked on the ingredients, and there were like 56 grams of sugar in his strawberry banana smoothie. So I said, you know, I'll make you one. So I started out with just, I would freeze the strawberries and bananas, and then I would use, I, I, I would use fruit juice at first for him to add a little bit of sugar, pure fruit juice. And then I eventually weaned that to water. He doesn't know the difference. I, I make him one every day now, just strawberries and bananas. And he thinks it's a strawberry banana smoothie from Sheets. Is banana generally your uh, kind of cover flavor? Yeah, for, for that. And I've also, I make a citrus one and I will put parts of lemon in it. And I will even just do the zest of the lemon for, for flavor. Like I do one with um, oranges, lemons, grapefruits, a little bit of the zest and just water. And it's my morning drink sometimes when I don't want to drink the orange juice from a carton. Um. I remember the very first time I saw a green colored drink was in Mexico. We were in Cancun, Mexico. And for the very first time, and we go there very often, once a year kind of thing. And for the very first time, they had a green kind of a drink. I mean, they had all the things lined up. <coughs> you know, the orange juice and the apple and whatnot. And I said, hmm, that's very interesting. Uh, and it's funny, flying down to to that you know to that destination, I was reading a magazine you know a regular magazine whatever there was, and there was somebody talking and that one of the articles about the greens, and the role of greens in our life and the green drinks because it just seems so sort of distasteful because I'm not I'm not used to seeing green as a drink, and that became at least my favorite drink throughout that duration of our vacations. Uh, because it was so, there's a little bit of lemon and some celery and whatnot, but thinner in its consistency, more watery. Uh, and so around the same time that, you know, uh, Sandy was getting into some of these, uh, you know, like experiential things. Um, so uh, the point is, uh, at least from my personal observational point, our body needs real food, not plastics. So when our bodies does not get the real food, it stays hungry. We actually have a center called satiety center in our brain. It only, f when it gets the real food, it recognizes it's the real food and it becomes okay. Now the ordinary high sugars and things that we have gotten used to, they are not the appetizing foods for our brain. The brain still keep looking for that. It's almost like looking for a good friend and not finding one. And when it keeps looking, it keeps on finding to getting more food, right? And it may not be the healthy food, but if you begin to give it the real nutritional food, it becomes happy, right? So, so one of the advantages, you know, you really can, uh, as, as Mike was asking, you know, some cover foods that you like, so you can add something like kale was never my favorite. You know? But if you add kale and add something to cover up its taste, then that taste is what you're liking, right? And then you're taking something which is may not be your favorite food, but it comes with that as a package deal. You know? And so so we began to experience that and you know uh, Sandy when she gets excited about something, you know, everybody's hearing about that every day in the office. Sorry. <laughs> you know that kind of person who is so excited, and so close to ninety-five percent of the office staff now have a Nutribullet. <laughs> you know this old gadget, and probably maybe fifty of the patients have it by now. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, so what we are doing in our own home is, you know, in the mornings, you know, uh, you know, uh, I have changed my morning styles of eating. 
uh, so I'll make one of these things in the morning, whatever you know, the idea of the moment is. And practically, you can add anything to your delight. It's not what she did. You can do whatever your heart desires. And so that becomes your rule. I, I like more watery kind of, kind of, you know, kind of, you know, I would a lot, put a lot more water in the, into that. And then fruits and other things. Once you get addicted to this thing, you would never want to go back to anything else. My son is a pure example of addiction beyond comprehension. You know, McDonald number six. <laughs> you know? I mean, he grew up watching television and getting his happy meal. You know? And for him to actually change that was absolutely impossible. And he even now, it's so amazing, he goes, I like that, but I don't want that. It does not even taste right. And I said, if he will change his habits and lifestyle, the whole world can change. <laughs> you know, it just is, and I'm not kidding. You know, I'm not kidding about that. So the invitation is those who tested it, uh, uh, just, just let it be. Not that it has to be, just let it be. And then explore that at your own pace. I recognize this is an option. You know, I, mean, I sometimes will have that in the breakfast as my main thing and from fruits and whatnot. Uh, or even over the weekends it becomes easier to do because you know you're floating around in the life as that life is, and experiencing with new things. I was in so so the point here is you know what Sandy said, uh, which is very important. We are really not promoting anything. If we're promoting something we're promoting, you know, these little little guys, you know, uh, which from my medicinal mind they are full of nice, important antioxidants. Uh, and antioxidants are needed for our body to clean up the junk you know, that we have. And uh, so my mission in life is to link people to, from the bodily experiences to foodly experiences and seeing them as a medicinal quality. That's really my, my major, major kind of mission. And within that mission, it's an invitation for you to explore as well. Uh, and I'll just kind of finish up on that thought. You know, I was uh, every I have eight or nine friends of mine. You know, they are different specialties, and we are from the same medical school. And every Memorial Weekend, we come together just to reflect on life. And we have done that for 25 years now. So it's Memorial Weekend. Uh, you know, we were together again, and um, and I have a colleague of mine. He's a psychiatrist in Philadelphia area. And as we were departing, he stopped and he said, you know what, my life is so busy and my wife generally ends up cooking food which is not very healthy. And I've done and asked and done and asked many, 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 many times. Today I have made the intentions to cut down my hours <coughs> of my practice and then begin to visit local farms, bring in food, myself and cook it myself in the kitchen because I don't know of any other way for me to do things other than actually taking up my own time <coughs> and, and I said what a, what a great because you have to start at your own home and doing it yourself right and so those are our parting comments and I have another colleague of mine you know he is a cancer specialist in Johnstown hematologist oncologist and he was saying you know the whole Movement is going in that direction because cancer treatments, by the time you do actually treat them, it's already way up in there, right? And it's important that we treat our bodies well so that we don't develop one. And if we do, how to reverse the body processes, you know? And he was also talking about the food and it's, you know, the meditation practices and the underpinnings. So the invitation is for you to experience that at your own pace that your life desires. Right? But recognize it didn't take her a lot of time to make this thing. Ordinary cooking that at times actually takes a lot more time. Uh, living healthy and cooking healthy actually is less expensive, less intensive, and more exciting. You just have to you know, figure it out as, as you do. Uh, and what, what you see us doing here is is something we do every Thursday here in our office. Uh, 
you know, Sandy and others, you know, we all cook ourselves together and, you know, everybody brings in things, you know, Peter brings in, you know, this and that and Peter is our physician assistant in the office and so we actually live this experience every week. That's my point. We don't talk about that, we live it. Every week we are doing these things right here. So it's part of our lifestyle, uh, wouldn't you say? And the students end up washing the plates. <laughs> <laughs> part of their lifestyle training. <laughs> um, so does that make some relevance? You know? 